New year, new me, right? We've all heard this. But the reality is that what most people figure out after a month or so is that it's a new year, but it's actually the same them. And they try to add some things and it didn't really work. So what we want to talk about today is how you can actually change the you. And instead of adding New Year's resolutions, actually be subtracting things. So you can have a more functional operating system and just a smooth internal environment so you can more likely achieve what you actually want to achieve this year. So happy New Year's, guys. But we're going to get serious and we're actually going to talk about what actually enables change in this new year for you. So with that said, welcome, Dr. Emil. Thank you. Thank you. This is one of my favorite concepts. So looking yeah. forward to this one. Cool. So here's the deal. Emil also saying it's one of his favorite concepts. Module five in the Arena Mindset Accelerator is based around this, uh, this philosophy, this concept of addition by subtraction. And a lot of the alumni say it's their favorite because what they realize is afterwards, like, oh, I kept trying to do more new things, more this and more that, more goals, more habits, more whatever. And I never actually took the time to strip away what was stopping me from being able to do that in the first place. A lot of times when we set goals, they're actually not that difficult to achieve in a vacuum. But when we already have so much other stuff going on, it is extremely difficult to achieve it. Most people operate, if you imagine a computer with a thousand tabs open, that's why everything works so slowly, why they're unable to achieve what they want to achieve. And when they want to do something new, they're like, okay, let me open up one more tab and let me split my focus even more. And what we're going to be talking about today is how you can really start closing down tabs and why that is so difficult and why most people avoid that, but how you can actually do it. Mil, anything you want to say before we get going, man? Let's get stuck in. Let's get stuck in. That line that you said about people wanting to achieve new goals and then just having too much other stuff going on, that that crystallized and distilled the point down to a T. So, yeah. Yeah. So here's the deal. If you're trying to add more stuff to a system that is already, let's call it on the cusp, there's already a lot of friction there. It's already at the edge of what it can handle yourself. You're just creating more friction. It's not an intelligent thing to do. If let's say, if you want to make a car go faster, maybe you can also reduce the weight instead of just trying to add more power if it's a really heavy car. In Formula One, that's the whole thesis always. Like how can we remove more and more and more and more weight? How can we remove, 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 remove? There's a quote by Colin Chapman, who's the founder of the F1 team at Lotus. He says to add speed, add lightness. Adding power makes you faster on the straights. Subtracting weight makes you faster everywhere. And that's what I see that a lot of people find is that when they subtract certain things from their life, and we're going to get to what this is, everything just becomes easier. Making decisions is so much easier because there's so much less things involved. Oh, I'm not involved with this thing anymore, with that person anymore, with this commitment anymore. Clarity all of a sudden comes from that vacuum. It's not from doing more things, but actually from creating a vacuum, things become really simple. Go for it. Clarity comes from that vacuum, but also you need clarity to decide what to get rid of. Yes and no. So I think it's kind of like a chicken and the egg thing. Yeah. Where some things, yes, you do need clarity, but some things are also obvious. You know them already. There are certain bad things like that WhatsApp group that you're a part of just drains your energy. Yeah. And everybody there sucks. It's like, get out of it. Yeah. Hanging out with that first day of school friend, the person you met back in your first day of school but that your life and his life in a completely different place and you're not really contributing to him and he's not really contributing to you, but you're still doing it out of habit. You don't need super clarity to recognize that's not serving you anymore. Is it habit or is it some sort of scarcity or people pleasing or something else? And this is because I had a big yeah. moment of addition through subtraction in the last you know, 12 months, 18 months. And so for me, it wasn't just habit. That's why I bring it up. I think what you said there at the end is great. It's not just habit. I think first it happens from a uh, habit, just not being aware of it. You're just doing it on autopilot. And then it's also recognizing, okay, this might be a bit tough for me to break. But first for most people, I do think it's just habit. It's something they're not conscious of. It's not that they're conscious of it. Ah, I know I need to break this, but I'm having difficulty. It's habit, which comes from something else such as people pleasing or which it is might not be ingrained. It might just be an automatic behavior that every Thursday we meet for, for a beer or whatever it may be for the last 10 years, or I'm in this WhatsApp group for the last five years. and I'm just not aware of it. It doesn't, I think a lot of it isn't from a place of, uh, of let's call it internal weakness. It could be just a lack of mindfulness, lack of awareness. 
I mean, I hear you, but I think that's the lower level stuff. I think that's the stuff that will be very easy to get rid of. And then yes. you get to the next level of stuff, which is doing it due to, you know, weakness or whatever. So, you know. Yeah, I agree with you. But the beautiful thing is from what I've seen that a lot of times people have this lower level stuff that actually is very impactful. Interesting. They're like, oh, I never thought about this, that I should just not do this thing anymore. And okay, it's not actually not that difficult to stop doing it. And once I actually stop doing it, wow, I have so much more time, more energy, more focus. Hmm. And that's the, that's the most amazing thing. When you can do something that doesn't take a lot of effort, but gives you a massive impact. That's ROI. That's all ROI is really. Yeah. So I do think the first thing is bringing awareness to these things. And then if you're still reluctant to give them up, you go through that process. So with that said, so we get running. All right. So first off with the new years, you're trying to make a resolution about what to do, get your life to the next level. Resist the temptation to say, I'm going to add this. I'm going to start doing this. Instead, ask yourself, what is actually hindering my life from going to the next level? What is a weight that is holding me back? For example, instead of saying a goal, I want to get in shape. I'm going to go to the gym instead of me and Emil, I'm sure you can give better insight in this from your health perspective. Say, what should I stop doing? Make that a resolution that you're going to, I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to remove this temptation from my life. Go for it. I would love to hear your perspective on this, man, especially on health. Cause it's such a, a clear subject. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I could go in on health for the whole hour. Um, yeah, there's so many things that people can get rid of. I mean, the core mistake is that people try to do everything in one go, and this is a core reason or issue with new years in general, you know, people already have their plates full. They try to add more stuff and not only more stuff, but all the stuff it's like, these are my goals and I'm going to do these 17 habits on Monday morning or Tuesday with a hangover on the 1st of January. Let's go. And then no shit, it doesn't survive the first week. So yeah, it's a combination of removing a lot of bullshit to then free up bandwidth to start implementing core key fundamental high impact habits. Like, uh, I'm sorry, can I just jump in? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I feel again, from my experience, seeing a lot of people go through this, it's it's actually much simpler sometimes. It's not that you free this up and then you have the space to really think and to really do these really productive things. What I've seen a lot of times is this is when people take out all the crud, all the bullshit, like you said, by default, better things just happen. It's not even that it requires so much effort that there's this phase one of removing phase two of, okay, this is a bit of abyss where you have to figure things out. And then phase three positive, a lot of times literally just remove something negative and all of a sudden things just start percolating on their own. I'd, I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. Um, yeah. And, and the other thing that happens particularly with health, but in life in general is that you spiral in a positive way. So as you yes. start to remove ballast, as you start to remove crud and bullshit, you start to become buoyant and spiral in a positive way. So yes, the more crap you remove, you can add positives, but inevitably you'll start taking off. Yeah. And I think again, we're trying to harp on this. If you try to add positive, you're just trying to push harder against resistance. And this resistance could be internal stuff, external stuff in your environment, yeah. whatever it may be. And what we're saying is, I am absolutely a fan of tapping into there's a lot of energy in New Year's. Everybody has resolutions. Tap into that energy. By all means, do so. But say, actually, what am I going to focus on removing? That's going to be where I put my energy to because that's going to be the sustainable thing. Because if I can, for example, remove this bad thing that doesn't serve me for life, ooh, that's amazing. I don't even have to be clear on what I want. Like how you're saying people need clarity. I don't, you don't even have to be clear on what you want. Yeah. But if you just remove this bad thing, it's going to be a positive. No way around it. I mean, alcohol is a great example for health and for life. Let's be yeah. honest. Like you remove that, you know, especially if it's more than say once a week and your life will improve across the board in every area. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. It's, we had one guy in the arena now and he was talking about how he's, he's had a bit of a struggle. Like he knows he needs to give this up, but he's struggling with it. And we had another guy who's like, Oh, I just gave it up six months ago. And I feel amazing. Life yeah. is amazing. <laughs> And I'll, I said this to them, like, guys, I've never heard somebody say, like, they get off uh, drinking a lot of alcohol or smoking weed. And they get, man, 
I really need to get back to smoking weed and drinking alcohol. My life was so much better then. I've never heard that. I've never heard anyone say that. So that's one thing. But kind of going back to this. So here's what we want to do. I want to do this a bit of a workshop, Eva. So if you guys want to take notes on your phone, on your computer, whatever, we're also going to have some prompts for you in the, we're going to have a link for these prompts in the show notes below. So here's a question you got to ask yourself for this next year. What do I have to stop doing in order to make room for what I need to start doing? It's very different than just asking, oh, what should my goals do? What should I add? What do I have to stop doing in order to make room for what I need to start doing? And the beautiful, th and the beautiful thing is, even if you don't know exactly what you need to start doing, you probably know what you need to stop doing. Like Emil was saying, the alcohol or watching a lot of television, whatever it may be. You know the things. We all know these things are not serving us. So any questions on your end, Emil, or anything you want to add before we just kind of like start listing things out? Um, going to bed late is another uh, home run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Across the board, life and everything. Yeah. All right. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to first talk about what are the things you actually need to do. And then I'm going to go over some common mistakes I see that stop people from actually doing this, some kind of fears and all that kind of jazz. And we're going to get to it. Okay. So on, um, you know what? Yeah, let's do it in that order. Okay. So first off on a personal level, a list you can kind of prompts you could run yourself through or what happens? Do I need to start shedding? For example, aimlessly sitting in front of the TV late at night, like Emil was saying, what excuses do you need to let go of? Oh, I'm not good at this. Oh, this is just how it is. Oh, I'll never get this or that. What kind of excuses do you need to let go of? What kind of social commitments do you need to shed? And these could be things that are macro as far as I have this person I keep hanging out with that we have, like I said, like a Thursday dinner or whatever it may be. And that's something you need to put a stop to, or it could even be exiting from group chats. One of the guys, I think in the second ever arena, it was interesting. That was one of his biggest takeaways. He was in a group chat. It was a WhatsApp chat with people that he had known for, I think for 10 years, they all started business together. And he was saying, man, like every time I see that WhatsApp chat, it just, it drags me down. These people are not people I'm proud to be associated with anymore. They're not, they haven't lifted themselves up from both uh, business perspective, values perspective, family perspective, everything. And he's like, I don't even know why I'm there anymore. And that's what I'm saying is just that awareness. And he, as soon as he got out of that, he was like, man, there's so much more freed, freed so much time and bandwidth from him. He didn't have any issues. He just needs to be aware that oh, maybe this is something I should cut out, take a step back, assess and so on. So we got that. Now on top of that, other specific people, are there people that you say, you know what, this is not a fit anymore. This person is just not a fit for what I want in my life. From a values perspective, from a trajectory perspective, from everything. This is just not a fit. And just to point on that one, that can both be uh, turning the volume down and also a transient dissociation rather than a total cutting out of. And I know Itamar will just say, just cut them out, but. No, I won't. Oh, there we go. Uh, so there, there's, there's yeah. shades of gray with that one because that, that's a hard one. So I knew this was a hard one. That's what I was just about to say. So here's what I've found that helps people do this. Embracing humility. Now, here's the deal. You are not Superman. You cannot put everyone on your back and you can take everyone up the mountain with you, especially if they don't want to get brought up. And a big part of it is recognizing from a, hum from a humility standpoint. First off, I can't bring everybody on my back. I can't do this. So me saying this doesn't mean that I'm a bad person. I'm not saying, oh, I'm above you. You're beneath me. It is what it is. It's like, I have my own limitations as well. I can't carry everybody up with me, especially if they don't want to come. And it's not that I'm being condescending. I'm just being realistic. Saying from a humble perspective, I can't do all of that. I can't achieve what I want to achieve for myself, my family, and the people that are actually trying to do this with me. If I'm also doing this on the side, and my focus is here on this person who doesn't want to help himself. And for me, looking at it from a place of humility, it really helped me. Because I recognize I'm not being an asshole. I'm not being condescending. I'm just being realistic. 
and understanding my own limitations, the limit of my capacities and abilities. And for me, that was like, oh, that's a harsh truth. It came from a humble perspective. I can't do all that. And Amir, like you were saying, shades of gray. For a lot of people, I've found that it's helpful to think. Also, it could be just for now. I can let go of this person in my life for now. And maybe, again, from a humility standpoint, when I'm in a better place, where I have more energy, more capacity, whatever it may be, I can help them come along as well. But right now, from where I am, I can't do it. It's not going to work. And having that kind of honest humility with yourself, it's very freeing. Yeah, my example for that is my parents. When I was leaving medicine to to start business, they were loving, but it was just blowing their minds. This made no sense to them. And they were, hey, um, make sure that you still have a CV. Make sure you're updating it. You know, when are you going to go back to being a doctor? All this kind of stuff. And from a loving place, from their own fears. And I was like, I need six months of space. And I didn't speak to them for six months, kept them at arm's length to then allow me to r- rise to, to where I wanted yeah. to be, to then allow me to have a much better relationship with them now. Yeah, that's great, man. So I think that's the big thing with the people is first off, recognizing that you're coming at it from a sense of humility, realistic humility. You can't put everyone in your back. It's not that you're just condescending, think you're better than them. It's just a reality of it. And it doesn't have to be forever. You can say for now, it, it's just not plausible. It doesn't fit. And again, I'm not judging. I'm just saying this is what it is. So that's people. The next thing you got to think about is behavior or character traits that you embody. Which one of these do you need to let go of? Character traits, jealousy, behavior, getting really defensive. or thinking the worst of people. Or for some people, it's also thinking always, always, always the best of people and not being realistic about the life. On top of that, we got stories. What stories do you need to stop telling yourself? These are a lot of times the belief structures that people hold. That, oh, if I do this, then this is going to be the consequence. Everyone in the world just wants this or that. And finally, the identity. And this is a big one. The one that annoys me the most is when people say I'm an introvert. We hold on to that identity as an excuse for them to not do the things that will actually serve them. Maybe you are an introvert, but that doesn't actually help you if you're going to a conference and you need to network with people. That's going to get your business to the next level if you need to create joint ventures or whatever it may be. Like that identity can be an excuse. I like, guess it's more difficult for me because I'm naturally more introverted. But you just holding on to that identity is an, obs- is an absolute thing and just saying, oh, I'm an introvert, so I can't do this thing. That you got to shed. Because again, this is an example. If, for example, you shed that identity and stop using it as an excuse, even if you didn't know how to apply it exactly, something good will come out of that vacuum. You putting yourself out there, you connecting with more people, whatever it may be. And again, not just on a business level. On a social level, a personal level, everything. So that's on the personal level. Do you have any questions about that, Emil? Or anything you want to run by? Uh, no, the, the introvert identity was a big one for me personally, uh, related to public speaking and, and socializing, interacting. Um, I can go into examples for that one. Um, the other one is with the first one that you said with, say, watching TV mindlessly, uh, just to expand that to distractions in general, especially ones you you know about, are very obvious. Whether it's um, alcohol, video games, um, dating, drugs, sex, TV, whatever it yeah. is, like that's especially when you know it's used as a distraction. And, and just a point: all those things can be fine, but yeah, if they're, they're being very with intentional, easy, yeah, exactly. But they're very easy to use as as distractions eating food is another one so just being aware of that and and yeah yeah so i'll say on a personal example it's you also don't want to put these these things so they're easy to be they're easy to distract you james clear said it very well he's like make a habit easy for you by making it really available it's the same thing vice versa so for example we just don't have a tv in our house we never have any alcohol in the fridge we don't have any um, like chips or dips or like any kind of candy or whatever in the house. 
like Ethan, my two year old has like these little like baby healthy crackers, but that's basically it. And these are just things that it's easier for us to be healthy and to live the kind of life we want because we're just in a vacuum of good stuff. The bad stuff just isn't there. And if every once in a while we do want to have a drink, we're very intentional about it. So we go out to a super nice place. We do that there. If we want to watch a nice movie, we go out to the movie theaters. We do that there. We don't just get sucked into these things. And just a, a, a flag there. A lot of people will be thinking, wow, that sounds boring as shit. Now, I don't yeah. <laughs> No, 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 no. And I, and I agree with you. And I'm, I'm going to counter that. And what I will say yeah. is that's a very knee jerk defensive reaction because mm -hmm. a lot of those things that you describe are not consumed intentionally. They're consumed mindlessly as a distraction. So yes, when they're available, they're the thing you do when you feel a bit uncomfortable and don't want to feel an emotion. And instead you put on Netflix, you eat some food, you drink some alcohol, or you go on social media. I, you don't think, I think so? It's, yeah, I think that's sometimes it. That's like in the worst case scenario. But I think sometimes you're not even just trying to avoid an emotion or whatever. You're just a bit tired from the day. So that's why you get sucked into because it's just there. It's available. For example, yeah. that identity of me being an introvert, it's available. Yeah, that belief well, I think, of mine, I think it's, it's more insidious that person, than that WhatsApp group. I think at because... times, again, I think at times, yes, I agree with you. But I think for a lot of people, it's not even that deep. It's not that they have this, this such big issues that they unpack through this thing. Sometimes it's just they're not intentional about this. You're not aware that this is what they're going sucked into. I think it's deeper. And I t I'll tell you why, because you're busy all day, right? And then at the end, yeah. you're tired. And all of a sudden, that's when all the stuff you've been distracting from with work can can come up. And you're like, hell it no. It can't come up. No, hell I don't no. agree with you. I think a lot of people, they just don't give themselves even the space between work and distraction to have that emotion arise and then say no to it. It's basically where you're saying you finish work, then you sit for a second, that emotion arises, and then you're like, you know what? Let me go play Xbox. Let me go watch TV. Let me go this, whatever. For most people, I don't think they have that gap there. To actually be aware. No, They're no, agree. But yeah, so that's the thing. They just go automatically. It's just an automatic yeah, yeah. behavior. But that doesn't remove the fact that there's something there. It might, it might not. Again, honestly, from my experience Maybe. working with a lot of people, some people have that stuff. For example, yeah, that yeah. guy with the WhatsApp group, he had no issue doing that. He's like, These guys are nonsense, actually. Why am I in this? Boom, let go of it. Like that. And there wasn't yeah, any, yeah. any hangover that he felt, oh, this was, was I a bit too harsh there, leaving it. None of that. He was just comfortable with it. So for, I think this might be your personal experience. Yeah, yeah what for I've sure. Seen, this is this is from my experience, for sure. Yeah, so well, what I've seen from a lot of data points is that some people, there's deeper stuff, but for most people, and again, the first constraint is actually being aware. And then are you aware, but you're not capable of doing it, then you might have some deeper issues that need to be resolved. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely from my personal experience, like from me, yeah. um, but also I think generally, you know, people have things to, that, that are worth stopping and looking at and, and working through, right? I don't think any of us are yeah. perfect, right? No, no, I agree with you. I'm just saying that I think most people have it because they have all these things, these kind of distractions yeah, yeah. in their life. They've never given themselves the opportunity to actually sit with these things and actually Agreed. have them arise. Agreed. Like the reason I think I'm very, people ask me like, oh, how come you're aware? I'm very aware because they don't have a lot of distractions. So yeah, yeah. when I'm in that in evening time, like, after we put our son down and I'm yeah. stretching in the living room and I have half an hour with myself and my thoughts, that's probably why I'm aware. Cause yeah, yeah, yeah. most people just don't do that because there's a TV there to distract them or whatever yeah, yeah. it may be. Agreed. And, and cool. you know, just to circle back, cause we went off on a little bit of a tangent is to say that like, once you get rid of a lot of these things, life gets much better because you're, you know, you're, you're mindlessly eating less. You're going to yeah. bed earlier because you're not watching TV until super late. You're not drinking alcohol, wrecking your sleep, blah, blah, blah. And we talked about that spiral. Like this is how you start spiraling in the right direction. And initially it might be painful and hard and boring as shit, you know, removing all the fun stuff in inverted commas from the house. But once you get over that, life improves immeasurably. And this isn't fun stuff because you're not doing it intentionally. You're doing it on autopilot for whatever the reason may be, it's automatic. It's just yeah. a, it's, it's a drug. It's a drug. Yeah. I, I love that you said that, that term spiral in the right direction. This is the thing. If you, people try to really force so much, they try to ins, insert so much force into moving themselves into the right direction with these new years resolution. But I think if they just remove a lot of the crud that's yeah. getting in their way, that's holding them back, 
you almost kind of naturally start spiraling in the right direction. Hundred percent. And that's yeah, that's that's such a great point. And, uh, so go on. Sorry, let's, let's no, on. I just wanted to go on to the next one. I just don't want to hammer this one on too much. The the last point. There's no such thing as maintenance. You're either spiraling up or down, right? So yeah. you, you can't, you're not cruising. So if you're not spiraling up, you're probably not you're not cruising like you think you are. You need to start removing this shit to start moving in the right direction. It, I don't fully agree with that because I think I just think on a, on a long term basis, you're either up or down. There are moments where, again, people can use this kind of motivation, New Year's or whatever. It can overcome a lot of the stuff that's holding them back. But that motivation isn't a long term fuel in the short last. term, in the yeah. short term. Yeah. But that that's, you know, yeah, moot because cool. right? you're not going to get anyway. Let's move on. Yeah. All right. So we did the personal stuff. We figured out what habits, excuses, social commitments, people, behavior, character traits, stories or identities you got to shed. Again, create a vacuum of, of the bad stuff, remove that stuff so you can spiral in the right direction upwards. Now let's talk about business. So you have to think, you know what, before we try to add on this new project, this new rock, this new whatever it may be, what do we need to shed? What isn't relevant for where, who we are right now and where we're trying to go? So this could be a specific venture. It could be an idea that you keep playing with in the back of your head. You just got to say no to. We're not going to do this this year. You know what, I'm going to shelf this for the next two years. Or you know, I'm just going to shelf it, period. I'm going to throw it in the trash because this idea is taking too much of my bandwidth and we're not actually going to action it. So it needs to be put to bed. It could be a specific product, either a product that you're thinking of creating that you've already created, or it could have been even your flagship product from five years ago, which was the best thing for you to promote five years ago. But right now it is definitely the thing that's holding, taking the most amount of energy and upkeep to make and to deliver. And it's not making you enough profits. This is a big one. After that, employees. There could be some people that are simply in the wrong seats. You need to change them. Or there may be some people that could just need to remove from the company. And this is a tough one. It's like You might have hoped that John would have been able to grow from his role as a junior marketing assistant when he just started up all the way to the CMO of you building a seven or eight figure company. And John gave his all when he was at those lower levels and he did a phenomenal job but maybe that's not who John is. He can't be the CMO. Maybe Jennifer was phenomenal at this or that, but she can't be the COO that you were hoping she'd be. And it's hard because you really appreciate them as human beings, but you gotta recognize they're not a fit for where the company is right now and definitely for not where we're trying to go to. And that's where you gotta have, again, it's gotta be tough. You gotta have a tough conversation, an honest conversation. Some people are going to be okay saying, okay, this is what it is. It's not working out. I can take a different role uh, back to a lower role, so to speak. And we need to bring in a COO or a CMO or whatever it may be. Some people might want to leave. But the reality is that the reality is what it is, so to speak. So we have employees. Do you have any questions about that? Because I know it's also a touchy one. Uh, not from me, less to say about this topic, but there is a book, The Pumpkin Plan by Michael Mikhailovitz, which talks a lot about trimming everything which isn't the pumpkin to allow the pumpkin mm. to grow significantly more. It's very easy to read and it talks about this in more detail from a tactical perspective. Great. Cool. Check it out. Um, so we have employees and then we have commitments. Are there any commitments your business has made that again, let's call it joint ventures, partnerships, whatever. There were a phenomenal win-win situation a couple of years ago, but now we're not anymore. So you got to talk to this person, the vendor, the partner, whatever it may be, and say, hey, this isn't a win-win anymore. So how can we close this up in a super respectable way where everyone's happy, but how do we close this out? A big one then after that is what responsibilities do you need to eliminate from your plate? To do an audit on what you're doing and say, okay, this is, this is not the task that someone in my position should be doing anymore. This is a $10 task or whatever you want to call it. And take inventory of that and say, what do I need to remove from my plate? This in of itself can create amazing results. Then finally, we go into the KPIs and the goals. And a lot of these are kind of back when. When we started, these were our KPIs, these were our goals, but we gotta let go of those because we're trying to think differently now. It doesn't just have to be bigger, it could be differently. We moved, we pivoted, whatever you wanna call it, and now we gotta think differently. And finally, as far as the business, it's the culture. 
when we just started back in the day, these were how we, this was how we operated. We're just a couple of people. It was very casual. You got to shed that. Maybe you got to turn a bit more professional now. And it's saying, this is not how we're going to conduct ourselves anymore. Doing that can make a giant, giant impact. So that's the main prompts I have for the business. Do you have any input here or any thoughts? Less on this one, but yeah, right. equally important. Yeah. Okay. So here's the deal, guys. That's really what I wanted to cover today. Michelangelo, uh, he's attributed to having said when somebody asked him, how did you create this? Uh, sorry. He asked him, somebody asked him, how did you create this beautiful statue of David? The one in Florence. And what they attributed to him saying was, all I did was chip away at everything that didn't look like David. The block was there. I just chipped away at it. And I think it's a beautiful metaphor because if instead of focusing in this new year on what more could we be adding to get to the next level, what new habit, what new goal, what new, whatever it may be, if we just said, okay, what do we need to remove? And by removing that, we'll create a vacuum where success is inevitable. Like we just keep spiraling up. That's when amazing results can happen. And it's a lot of amazing results without tremendous effort because you're not fighting against so many bad things in your life and trying to add new things and just trying to push all of it together. Instead of it, you're removing the bad stuff, creating an easier space to flow in, and then you have less to push. And that's why success can be a lot more sustainable. So with the whole new year, new me vibe, what I would really recommend is ask yourself honestly, is this gonna be the new year and the same you with just some things that you're trying to add on or are you actually going to change you? Is it going to be a new year with a new you? And if you really want to do that second one, the best way to do that is by removing. Because once you do that, you give that new you the opportunity to really come out. This is a glorious concept. And <laughs> that has been hugely powerful. I said this to each of before the podcast started. It's like, I love this idea. I love this concept. It's been so beneficial for me personally. Um, so yeah. yeah, really, really think about this. Yeah, it's been... It's been a very beneficial concept for a lot of the arena alumni. They all say, not all, but a lot of these guys say, this is the main thing that's helped me. They say, wow, I didn't realize how simple it could be. Even making decisions after this is so simple because I don't have to worry about this, this, and that. That's not a part of my life anymore. So again, this is something that's emotionally difficult to do, but it's extremely impactful. And it's also a lot of times tactically very simple and very fast. It's just emotionally difficult. So it's that whole easy choices, hard life, or hard choices, easy life. And aside from that, I think we'll wrap it up. We'll wish you a phenomenal new year. And again, take the challenge on yourself. Don't add into your new year resolutions. Say instead, what do I need to stop doing? What do I need to remove in order to make room for the me 2.0, that next level of stuff that I want for myself, my family, my achievements, and so on and so on. Sound Have good? an amazing new year, guys. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and aside from that, we will have the prompts in the show notes below if you want to get those. Have a great news, guys. One last thing, guys. If you really want to make a powerful resolution and lock in your growth, I invite you to join the Q1 Arena Mindset Accelerator. So a couple things to clarify. First off, I will still be leading the Q&As. You will still have personal access to me. I will still guide you to make sure that you transform your mindset, build emotional fortitude, and just conquer whatever you need to conquer so you can achieve new heights. So that's number one. Number two, spots are limited. We already have people that have already signed up. Spots are very limited because we keep the group small so everybody can get that personal attention. Number three, there is an early bird special. So if you sign up before January 6th, you can get $1,500 off the arena price. And four, there's a money back guarantee. You can try the program, do everything in it, get results. But if you still don't like it for whatever reason, there's 100% money back guarantee. So there's basically no risk. You can make this commitment to yourself risk-free. Now, officially, it starts March 6th, but we have live workshops that both Dr. Me and I would be leading all the way up to that. So you can sign up, and in January, you already start having live workshops to really start off 2023 with a bang and get yourself to the next level. So if that's something that interests you and you really want us to take you to the next level and help you take the next step, you can apply at edomomrani.com slash apply. You're going to find that link in the show notes below as well. And we're excited. This next version of the arena that we put together, it's got some amazing things. The results people have gotten are phenomenal and we're excited to help you guys get to the next level. So again, I'll be doing the Q and A's. Spaces are very limited, 100% money back guarantee. Before January 6th, early bird special, $1,500 off. And again, to apply, go to etamarani.com slash apply. And even though it's starting in March 6th, 
all the way up to that. We will be leading live workshops so you can start off 2023 in the right way and just excel. So again, edamamrani.com slash apply. Thank you for listening to the Emotional Fortitude Podcast. Please tell a friend if you enjoyed it and found value in it. Three last things before you go, though. If you feel like someone else with your exact skill set and abilities could be accomplishing more than you currently are, that's a mindset and emotional access issue. And here are three ways I'd love to help you conquer any internal limitations, go big, and win. One, three quick ideas Tuesday newsletter. It's a weekly email with three quick ideas around one aspect of elite performance and how to approach it differently to get better and faster results. People say it's the most thought-provoking and impactful two minutes they spend in their inbox each week. It's easy to sign up to and easy to cancel, and you can sign up at edamomryan.com slash three ideas. Two is the Emotional Fortitude Micro Course. It will help you build the emotional fortitude and confidently tackle any goal. It's the complete, nothing held back, emotional fortitude system in five simple parts. It's all under five minutes each module. See it, use it, and win. And it's completely free at edamomrani.com slash course. And number three, lastly, if you want to dive in and aggressively level up, the Arena Mindset Accelerator might be for you. It's a six-week intense sprint for entrepreneurs who are up for a dramatic transformation. It's an interactive live program where you'll be working with me in a very hands-on way to get clarity on what you want, build an effective mindset to optimize for your goals, and establish elite emotional fortitude that would allow you to overcome any fear or doubt that could get in your way. You can learn more at itamarmarani.com slash accelerator. You can find all of these links in the show notes below or go to itamarmarani.com and have a look around. Until next time, who dares wins. <laughs>